I don't like spiders and snakes, but I do like Saturday night at a short track, and that's right where we are at Stafford Motor Speedway. And even if you don't share my phobias, if you do share my passion for this great American tradition, then you're in luck because sponsored by the Cruise Shop, this is the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 8 coverage of the Bootleg Racing League's Outlaw Modified Series, the 2019 Spring Season Championship. The points battle is close, the racing will be close, and so is the start, and you'll be able to see all the SK Modified short track action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts, live as it happens right here on GSRC. Hello and welcome. Way up in the booth to bring you our word's eye view. It's Soup and Crackers. Yours truly, Bill Soup's on. Joined by my longtime booth mate, Sean Crackers Ambrose. Turning the knobs and pushing the sliders is our director, Joe Peak, Armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Okay, Crackers, right now there's an NBA playoff game. There's a heavyweight title bout. With that said, there's no place I'd rather be than right here with you at this place. Tell the fans a little bit about Stafford. Soup, is it okay if I refer to you as Mr. Sensitivity? Will you be offended by oh, that? Oh, don't call me that. Okay, all right, all right. Well, we'll say with me. Hey, listen, throughout its history, Stafford Motor Speedway has enjoyed a reputation for the innovative soup. And yes, innovative. I said that. That's a $20 word for you, everyone there. Known as the Stafford Springs Agricultural Park, this 100-acre uh, facility was developed to showcase the areas well agricultural heritage it, it opened as a horse track and you know when the park opened in 1870 patrons from the big city nearby hartford would travel directly to the entrance gate aboard the newest form of uh, mechanized transportation at time it was called a trolley soup so that gives you an idea how long stafford's been around it's an oval you see that on screen it's got about uh, somewhere between seven and nine degrees of banking not a whole lot okay but the popularity of automobile racing in other regions of the country gave way to motor racing they got rid of the horses they sent them well no they ain't sent them anywhere they sent them to a beautiful pasture i'll leave that alone <laughs> we don't want <laughs> we don't want to annoy anybody but listen the new stafford speedway remains like the old stafford speedway when the old agricultural park opened its gate in 1870 it was considered on the cutting edge and like i said the horses are gone but one thing remains this track is one of excitement and a commitment to excellence, and the best way to take a look at it is to hop on board the GSRC SK Modified for a lap around Stafford Motor Speedway, home of the SK Modifieds. Hello, I'm James Crahoulin, the GSRC SK Modified. I'm going to take you for a lap around the Stafford Motor Speedway. Stafford is a track with a very late entry going into turn one. If you're able to stay patient and go against your instincts here, you're going to be able to run a much smoother line around the track. And you're going to see many fast ways to get around here. One of the most common, though, is going to keep those left side tires right down there on that white line, especially early on in the run. But as your car progresses later on into the race, Look for drivers to be using that apron just a little bit more to help get them a little bit more rotation throughout the corner. Look for the apron to be used as well to try and sneak below other cars as you're trying to make a pass and upset their line and try and get the good drive off of the corner and beat them down into the next turn. And those were some laps around the Stafford Motor Speedway. You got him, Chuck. That lap guide, as well as everything on this broadcast, is sponsored by the Cruise Shop. Yes, folks, the Cruise Shop has been in operation since 1996. And you know, they're a team of highly experienced travel agents that have a huge passion for travel. They specialize in cruises, all inclusive resorts, escorted tours, Disney and family travel, group vacations, honeymoons, and weddings. They would love an opportunity to help you plan your next vacation. Give them a call today, 260-755-6125, or, hey, visit their website, thecruiseshopfw.com. The Cruise Shop is dedicated to fulfilling their clients' dreams, one destination at a time, Soup. Just want to uh, assure Donnie Moore, who has the ASPCA on the side of his car, that no... No horses were injured in the making of this broadcast. Let's go ahead and take a look at the points right now. This one, boy, this will take your breath away, though. J.R. Shepard, James Lowe, and Chris Bassini 
all within three points of each other. You can shuffle those up any way you like. We'll see how it plays out with only a few races to go. Kenny Kibbe and Donnie Moore looking on from way back. Happy just to be on the top five overlay. All right, Sean, we're always picking up new viewers. Certainly, uh, we're getting a few more tonight. So why don't we talk about the event details? All right, Sue, real quickly, let's get those in and talk about those details. It is round eight of 11. We were just talking about the pre-race. Things are winding down here. Uh, 100 laps tonight. No tires allowed. This is the iRacing fix setup. And, uh, Soup, well, that fix setup uh, comes along with the NASCAR Lucky Dog and one fast repair. And guess what, Soup? Uh, the, uh, the grid inverts from the top 12 of the previous race. That's one of the unique things they do here in the boot. And, uh, you know, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right. We've got something we're going to work on and we'll be back back with everybody here in a moment on GSRC. Sponsored by the Cruise Shop. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 8 coverage of the Bootleg Racing League's Outlaw Modified Series here on the 2019 Spring Season Championship coming your way from Stafford Motor Speedway. All right, we've talked about the points. We've gone over the details, shown you the track. Let's get to the business on the track right now. Practice going on. J.R. Shepard, fastest of anybody for the 18.9. Donnie Moore sitting in second place. One thing we can do is bring up the weather, take a look at that, see how that's going to play out. We're, we're looking uh rarely that we're racing, it looks like, in the sunshine here today. It's a rare occasion for us, not under the lights. Temperature seems nice, track temperature, only at 88 degrees, should not be an issue. I think we're in store for some good racing. 100 laps on tap. How about the guys who are chasing J.R. Shepard? Well, they seem pretty quick as well. James Lowe, third fastest in practice. And just a tick behind him, Chris Pacini. You saw it in the points. Shepard, Lowe, and Pacini separated by three points. Kenny Kibbe is here with us today. There's Joshua Banks. Good to see him back. Joshua Parton and thanks Banks. Missed out on last season's championship by just a few points. Has been absent for most of this season. Since he didn't race in the last race, he won't get the advantage of the regrid. You'll be looking for him to start somewhere 13th or farther. There's James Lowe. He's got his car parked. Donnie Super. Moore! Go ahead, Sean. I just love this track. Uh, it's a real classic. I mean, modified racers have been running here. Uh, I talked about how old the facility is, but I mean, they've been running modifieds here basically since the beginning of the modified division, uh, dating back to the late 40s. Um, the SK modified, of course, came came around and uh, was born of the Arut family. It was an idea to, to, to bring a little bit less expensive, a little bit more... Uh, how shall I say, restricted form of, of modified racing, make it a little bit affordable, more affordable to the common man, as uh, that was also the beginning of what we now know as the, the Will and Modified Tour in the mid-70s. Uh, it, it was expensive for guys to get involved. And uh, um, uh, my, my father, who was a modified driver at the time, and quite frankly, it was one of the reasons he principally got out of the modified racing in the late 70s as a owner driver it became very very expensive and uh the sks brought uh like i said brought it a little bit more back to the common man and they still run these sks today uh, this is the home the sk modified right here at stafford motor speedway so uh, anytime we get a race here it's a special one and uh you know it'd be kind of funny actually if, if they do decide to switch over to the new tour modified that is coming hashtag soon for my racing uh well I guess it'll give Stafford a little bit uh, different feel. It won't be quite the same, not running the SK at the home of the SK. I talked about a heavyweight bout going on today. We're looking there at Todd Liston. Always can't help to think of Sonny Liston, the great heavyweight chap. There's Kenny Kibbe in his number 14 machine. 
You know, we're sponsored by the cruise shop, and they probably don't have many packages to get you to Tijuana, so we brought Tijuana to you. Let's take a look at the number 83 car. Coming back, Tijuana McGuire, TJ, back here racing with us today. Good to see him out. Yeah, indeed he is. We haven't seen him in a few rounds. Good to see him back on track, get that 83 out there. And for all you fans watching from the city of Tijuana, I apologize, but let's be honest. The number eight car, Sarah Maria Spiller here. Dupe, I've been to Tijuana, okay? <laughs> I've been to Tijuana. Well, if you're looking for a... I don't. A painting of Elvis on velvet. That's where you want to go. I got a painting of Kiss on velvet in Tijuana. I don't have it anymore, but I had it for many, many years. It was a favorite of mine. That is a true story. I'm not. I'm not I'm, embellishing that. That I'm, is absolutely true. Did not doubt you for a second. <laughs> Let's look at a fun little battle out on track right now. This is Lowell Jewel. This is this little guy's playing a little bit. Number three car with the 99 of James Lowe next to him. Todd Liston in the mid. And there's Sarah Maria Spiller back there trying to pick up a little bit of information, watching those faster guys trying to pick up on the racing line. One of these days, Sarah's going to end up in the 12th position. We're going to see her on the pole. And with that, practice is over. So again, the grid is already set. We'll give you that right now as the iRacing decides to populate the field. Telling everybody, come on in, take your last sip of drink there. Buckle up and let's get this show on the road. On the pole, it is Ruben Altice. He's going to be inside of Joshua Buckley. Big field today, so I'll keep going through the top 10. J.R. Shepard sits ahead of Chris Bassini. James Lowe, now look at that. Shepard, Pastini, and Lowe all together in the points, all together on the grid. Donnie Moore behind them. Kenny Kibbe is going to be inside of Andy Tico. And then row five is populated by Bruce Pearson and Scotty Zerk. All right, soup. Then we're going to go down to row six, and that's where we're going to find Kurt Smith in the, uh, the number six, right next to Jeffrey Harden, his number 44 SK modified. And then the butler. Yes, the butler did it, and he is here. Starting 13th tonight into number 22. Adam Shane will start 14th in his number 31 SK modified. Row 8 is going to go Todd Liston. We were just talking about him a moment ago, the 87. Kurt Meeks right next to him in his 18. Number of former modified great Greg Sachs. Row 9, Lowell Jewel, the boss, is starting 17th tonight right next to John Hine in his familiar number 21. And row 10, we're going to go to Joshua Banks in a number 36 and Jason Menda in the number 45. And Soup, I'll take the rest. There's Tijuana. He's starting 21st in a number 83. And right there with him is going to be Chris Wolfson in his number seven. And uh, Sarah Maria Spiller is back with us this week. And she'll start last in this field, 23rd. We still got a great field this evening, 23 SK Modifieds ready to rip here at Stafford Motor Speedway. Well, we got a couple rabbits up in front, Ruben Altice and Joshua Buckley, and then three hounds back behind them there, Shepard, Pacini, and Lowe. They worked their way around the warm-up lap, now the pace lap. You'll have drivers on two different uh, agendas here. You have Altice and Buckley, of course, trying to win. Then you got the guys of Shepard and, and Lowe back there and, and Pacini. They want to win, but they also want to keep track of the guys that are racing in the points. And we'll follow the, the progress of Joshua Banks, who's back there in 19th position, as he works his way through the field as well. Pace car is in. From Stafford Motor Speedway. Shag a look, shag a look, makes you want to holler, hide a hole! Ruben Altice gets the jump on the field and is out in front, and it doesn't take long for the number 98 to get underneath Buckley for second. Bassini wants to do that as well, but cannot. And yes, he can, because he's going to move Buckley out of the oh. way. I don't know if we're going to get the yellow Buckley. I guess we are. Oh, yeah, no, yellow's out. Yellow is out indeed, Soup, and uh, oh, that 82 is going to get around. And 
I don't think he hit the wall, though, when the car spun. Yep. No. Yep, that looks okay. So, hang on to that fast repair, Josh. Well, I told you the hounds were back there, and they were nipping. How about Donnie Moore at the very back of this field, Soup? Uh, geez. Not used to seeing Donnie all the way back there. I'm not so sure. I'm showing him in. Oh, I'm showing my... him in fifth. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. My timing and score timing messing with me. I was looking there and not at my screen. There and you there's go. There's Donnie. I see him now. All right. Let me. Okay. I'm going to. Flying by instruments there. So no, got... I'm. I'm going to switch uh, my Trust glasses. The horizon, baby. Okay, I'm, I'm going right. to this. I'm going to the strong. I'm going to move to the threes. I'm going to get out of the two point seven fives and go to the threes. All right, so we get our first yellow right away. That's the first one and only one we're going to have tonight is right. we're going to be going <laughs> green flag here with four to go. 96 laps of green flag racing coming your way here from Stafford Motor Speedway. Sean, you old enough to remember Jim Stafford? Did you did you catch my spider and snakes reference there, or is that one a I, little I, too I young for it? No, no, I, no I, I did catch that, and okay. I, hopefully there are – some people watching and listening good. that they get that zone. Got to know we're good? Your okay. Yeah, I think we're good. We got <laughs> that one was for the boss there, uh, Lowell Jewel. I'm sure he got that one. Yeah, Mike Mahoney's watching. He probably knows what that is. All right, the lights are still on the pace car. We're going to go around one more time. Let's see if anyone was able to pick up any to cheat any major positions there. Since that. We went, I see, not really. Everyone pretty much racing where they were. We only had a, about a lap of green flag before it went south. I guess your big loser is Joshua Buckley, who is down 21 position. Started on the outside of row one. And now is the caboose of this 23-car train. Pace car is in. The number 11 is in control. Ruben Altis. Boy, he's really holding them up. He's really holding them up. <laughs> My goodness, Pacini said, you're really holding me up in the 50 <laughs> shot. Enter the chrome horn. Yes. Well, he's already wow. used it once. Look at Shepard on the top side in that familiar number 98, trying to make it work up there. The other driver up high is James Lowe. We, we joke about it, but he doesn't like to race the top line. His favorite is to... For low to get the car low, and he's trying to do that right now, but Donnie Moore will have none other than 26, but now he gets inside. Oh, three wide going into turn three here in the back of the field. Sarah, Mar Sarah Maria Speller was in the middle of that. Woo, Menda backed out of it. I think that was a good idea as they approached. Turning the car around. That's the 96 in the wall. Car stacking up behind him. Kurt Smith involved in that, unfortunately, but it started with Bruce Parson. I think Parson just got looser with their contact. Oh, no, he got a little help, unfortunately. And uh, Pearson, I'm sorry. Yeah. Pearson, as I'm switching glasses, I promise. Give me a second here. A little, little help from Adam Shade, I think. Right on board with Smith looking at it. Bruce banged the drum slowly, Pearson, as he gets turned around. There he goes. Smith tries to get by, but just runs out of room between Pearson and the wall. And then they start plowing in after that. Well, I'll tell you who that was good news for. That was good news for J.R. Shepard, because he was on the top side, and Ruben Altiz would not let him around. And Pacini had closed up on the back of Altiz, and Lowe was back behind Alcini. I mean, there was a there was a long train down on the bottom that uh, no one was going to let J.R. Shepard in. So he's still going to be starting outside of row one when we do go green, but at least uh, he won't be in such dire straits. Take another look for any hard chargers. How about six spots for the driver in 12th, car number 21, John Hine. 18th to 12th, well done. If things were to end right now, you'll be on the pole for our race next round. 
Fortunately for us, though, it's not going to end right now because that would be disappointing after the big buildup and the pre-race show. No, no, no. We got lots of racing for you. 89 laps to go. Many of them will be under green. I, is that the second time we've promised that? Well, that the that the 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 last <laughs> yellow flag was the was the exception that proves the rule. So we got that one out. Now we are good to go all the way. This is going to be interesting. Shepard goes to the top. Now, last time, Chris Messina had enough of Ruben Altis and made a suggestion of when it was time for Altis to get on the throttle. We'll see if uh, the lesson is learned. That, that late start almost lets Shepard get around the outside again. Shepard stuck up top. Here we go. This is going to be important, both for Ortiz and for Shepard, Lowe, and Fasini. Little better jump this time from Ortiz. Again, the 98 stuck on top. I think I figured out why Donnie Moore looked like he was at the back of the field to me before. I've never known Donnie to have problems with the connection, but I keep losing yeah. him on screen, so that's something to watch out for for Donnie Moore. He's been blinky too. Now, this is interesting. Bassini went to the top side. I don't think he had faith that uh, Altice was going to be a hold off Shepard. My goodness, Bassini doing some crystal ball racing right now as he saw the writing on the roll. Thought that Shepard would get around Altice, so he went to the outside, wanted to follow Shepard through, didn't want to get stuck behind the 11. Well, Unfortunately not... for Piscini, yeah, it's not working as well as it did for Shepard. Yeah, no, not yet. Anyway, Piscini got to get on his horse here going down. Oh, I said that. Uh, going down the back straight, heading into three, and the yellow's out. And that happened in the back of the field, and uh, it Meeks. looks like, yeah, Kurt Meeks and Sarah Spiller got into it. And then cars behind him getting involved. It was Chris Wolfson. Uh, there's, there's Bruce again. He had another one, got into another incident there, but... Sarah Spiller got some serious damage on the car. She's on her way into the pits. Aren't the racing, aren't the racing gods fickle as we have Wolfson and Shepard in the same race? I mean, this. <laughs> right on board with Sarah Spiller. So another. Another yellow flag here, and things go south for Spiller and Wolfson and Meeks. There are fast repairs. They can come on in, get a free one. Probably will not go a lap down. And honestly, this could be, oh, I was going to say this is a good thing for Chris Pacini because he was stuck back behind Altis, but I racing is going to score Pacini in second yeah. position. I guess he's probably okay with that. Well, I mean, he'll get to go toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah. here with, with yeah. JR and, and see what he's got under the hood there. And uh, we'll see. This this should be a good battle on the restart between these two. And Piscini just gets better every week, Soup. And uh, I'm going to be honest. I think you're looking at a future champion in Chris Piscini. I, I really, I, I think the uh, the number 15 SK Modified, I, I think, is going to find itself a championship here one of these days. It, Maybe this season, maybe not, but uh, I think it's coming. I think Piscini has shown that he can be very, very consistent uh, in that uh, Eastport feeds, number 15 SK modified. Sean and I have done these for a while, so let's go ahead and look at car number 36, Joshua Banks. We think he's going to be a contender before this is done. Started in 19th, already picked up six spots. Lincoln a little bit for me. There we have it. He's right behind Dan Butler. I really appreciate the way some of these guys are keeping a nice steady paint scheme. It's always easy to locate Butler in his number 22 fluorescent orange machine. Yeah, I, I will say in the modified divisions, uh, r really NASCAR yeah. and your higher echelon of racing is really only where you see lots of paint scheme changes. Uh, these guys run the same paint scheme just about every season, unless there's a major sponsorship change or something like that. More more important place to spend that money than uh, yeah. 
changing it up a little bit. Trust me, that number 15 modified had the same color scheme on it all the way through the 70s. <laughs> it was it was powder blue with orange and uh, a deeper blue stripe on it, and a little bit of yellow mixed in. All right, base car is pulling in. I'm going to change it up. I think we need to break the streak here, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. Gather up the chickens, take cover out of the cows. The horses are out of the barn, and we're going racing again. Working lap number 21. Going with a more traditional call to get the action going is going to give us a long green flag run right now. And sure enough, it is Shepard ahead of Bassini. Stuck on the inside is Altice looking low, trying to get that 99 around the top. He needs to follow those two guys. Kibby's uh, back there. Kibby is back there uh, fighting off uh, Andy uh, Tico right now. Tico keeps washing up the track just a little bit, making this tough on Kibby. They almost go wheel to wheel there. Kibby again, Ooh. boy, he really lets it drift up, but he keeps yeah. the right sides off the wall. Took my breath away. Look at the drive he'll get out of two. Up front, they race in single file. Shepard, Pacini, Low, and Altice. Lowe's did get around Altice. The action is Kibby trying to get up there and race with those guys. The blinking Donnie Moore back there trying to find a way around, and we've had more trouble. Yeah, apparently Meeks had a problem here on track. I, I didn't see it and haven't picked it up yet. Let's watch the replay together. Second time he's been here. Yep, there it is. Our oh, director my. found it. Oh. Everybody loses there, all three of these cars. Okay, folks, I'm trying every trick I know. I'm going to uh, different openings to try to get a green flag run here. I've a. Uh, Could I pull I, Joe Boo out of the drawer? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. I've been overly optimistic. I thought that would work, so now I'm going to try a different approach. I'm, I'm going to be pessimistic. I'm going to predict we're going to have lots of yellows and see if that helps. Oh, my director says just ignore them. Okay, we're going to ignore them. All right. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna I'm, I'm sweep gonna it go, under the rug is what we're going to do. I'm going to go with Joe. I think we should sweep it under the okay. rug. <laughs> sure. All right. Hey, we got a quarter of it in. So, uh, oh no, these are fine. Yeah, we're good. We're absolutely good. Well, that gives us an opportunity to check in on our Joshua Banks watch. He is up two more spots since we saw him last now up into 11th. And my third grade math teacher would appreciate that I realize that's an odd number, which means he will be on the inside. Little shout out to Mrs. Curtin. Shepard, Bassini, Lowe. That's how they sit on the track. And Shepard, Lowe, Bassini is how they sit in the points. Now they double up. This is a good opportunity for Lowe now. The Shepard's pinned up top. Watch the number 99 try to get right on the back of... Uh, of Shepard. I say Shepard's pinned up top. I meant uh, Pacini is pinned up on top. Time to go racing. Good jump from JR. The 15 of Pacini wants in. Let me in. Let me in. James Lowe says, nope. I think I got second position. Lowe and Pacini side by side. More banging in the back. We're still racing. Although no, I think Liston has gone around. No, no, we're not. And no, Liston, Liston didn't just go around. That car detonated when it hit the wall. And we've got Menda on his lid. John Hine got caught up in the middle of that. It was a mess back there going into turn three. Poor Hine. Hine's on the top side. The question is, did he drift down or did he hold his line? That's Liston and Hine get together. Then Hine comes down and hits a... Uh, it's pardon and thanks Joshua Banks as he tried to go by. And Soup, I think the boss was listening and he wants to change things up. Next restart, they're going to single file, buddy. 
See, we're pulling out all the stops. We're using every trick in the book. He didn't sound happy when he said that, by the way. Well, we'll see if that fixes us up a little bit. So all right, gives us... Go ahead. Uh, no, I just, well, I was going to interject a little a little something here about Stafford. You know, it's been a big month here at the track. They just uh, last week, last Saturday, had the big Napa Spring Sizzler 200. And uh, Doug Kobe was going for his fourth uh, Spring Sizzler victory. And uh, a guy named Craig Lutz was chasing his first career NASCAR wheel and modified tour win. And in the end, though, it was veteran Kobe who made the winning move with a dive under Lutz with just over 10 laps remaining. And, well, Doug Kobe, uh, former uh, wheel and modified champion, uh, wins that Spring Sizzler 200. And that is really the the Spring Sizzler is the kickoff for just about everybody on the modified scene in the Northeast. Uh, if you're racing modified, you kind of uh, you take you, you do your racing on Saturday night and then you either get on the ferry or you get in your car and you race to Stafford uh, the next day. Uh, to watch the races so a uh, good time had by all and they actually had good weather the spring sizzler can sometimes in fact it was delayed a week uh it can be a little dicey up there in early may uh when, when you get going here with racing i'm telling you the title of that race gets me gets me hankering for some reasonably priced steak <laughs> and a salad bar all right, let's go yes. ahead and check in on Justin Banks again since we saw him last. Yep. Uh, Josh, Joshua Banks, he's now up uh, two more spots into ninth. Here they go, Sue. Pace car is in. All right, this is uh, the Bootleg Racing League's form of putting the drivers in timeout as they have to start with a single file restart. Shepard, Bassini, Lowe, Altice, Andy Tico have not mentioned him as he sits in fifth position trying to hold back Kenny Kibbe. Oh, Pearson spinning. Is that Pearson spinning? Who was that? Adam Shane, I think. Adam Shane, I think. And that brought Got the... It. I don't think there was any contact. I think he spun, or did he get a little help? Let's no, see. a little help he from bang the drum there. Yeah, well, he checked up for Wolfson in front of him. Wolfson had to check up, and I think that's what got him a little slow. I'm not going to put that one directly yeah. on anybody. I think it was just a... Well, the accordion came out soon, but it was time for a little polka. Papa, baby. All right. What's what's safer than a single file restart? Maybe they can like have the drivers run to their vehicles next time. <laughs> no, just just it's quite, thinking it's, outside it's the box. Yeah, it's quite difficult getting in and out of the modified. Actually, there's quite a lot to do. I don't know. Maybe uh, send them all out of the pit lane one at a time. Uh, yeah. Now, nah, this is fun. We're having <laughs> fun. This is good racing, and this is what short tracks are all about. You get uh, you get different types here. J.R. Shepard, your leader. Pacini, low. Josh Banks right now, Soup, looks like on my board, the biggest mover of the race. He's up 10, sitting there in ninth. He's yep. inside the top 10. Now that's where you want to be if you want a good starting spot come next week when we hit round nine. One of the advantages to doing these series so many times, the commentators get to know the drivers and they get a feel for how things may go. We had a hunch that Joshua Banks may make his presence known, even though he started back in 19th. And you know, don't know we, if he's being helped by these yellow flags. It's less laps for him to pass anybody. Go ahead. We get to know the drivers, and we still mess up their names, and and that's that's because we love them. It's a, it's a it's a form of endearment, if you will. So, would not be a GSRC broadcast unless that happened. It's in my contract. That's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ruben LT started on the pole. He sits in fourth. He's done a good job of hanging with the big boys. Andy Tico is back in fifth. After getting turned around by Pacini, Joshua Buckley back in 18th. Not that far away from getting to that transfer spot. We may see him back on the front row again next week. Lights are on the pace car. We're going to go around one more time, driven by the beautiful... Medina Mendez out of Long Beach, California. My God made two tops. Soup, I think 
we are going to get to see the sun set here at Stafford Motor Speedway. Uh, we may see the sun motion. rise if it keeps going the way it is, but <laughs> it's about, that's not where I was going with that soup. But uh, no, I, I think we may see the lights kick on here pretty soon. We're approaching nine o'clock. That's right. Do we not have lights? No, we don't. Not on iRacing. My bad. All right. Well, um, the I'll two dimensional fans have cell phones, so they can like put on their, their <laughs> right, right, all pointed at the track. We're going green, working lap number 39. It is J.R. Shepard of the number 98 multi-time champion out in front of Chris Pacini. Two car lanes back. Low in third. The guy who started on the pole, Ruben Altiz in fifth. Andy Tico doing a good job of staying in the top five, up three spots. We get a green flag lap in. Single file, everybody down on the low line. This is a one-line racetrack right now. Watch Joshua Banks get under the 44. Give him gets another one. Harden, he, he completes the pass, yeah. Good on Banks. Up in front of them, it's Tico oh. and Kibby still going at it, Sue. Yeah, keep it, Kibby said, I have enough of this low line. You're not gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna go around the top side. The port tight tries to close the door. And Tico says no, and he kicks the door back in, and oh, everybody no. slams into it, including the boss, Ooh. Lowell Jewel. Okay, well. <laughs> We're going to go on board Butler here. Is he was uh, one of the last cars to actually get there and actually get in trouble. Unfortunately, that's going to hurt. And Butler's going to need a can pit just, after that. Just feel him trying to use his Flintstone feet there to try to put the yeah. put his shoes through the floorboard, get that car to woe up, but smacked him right shoes into were through the Shoes were through the floorboard. Anchor <laughs> was out the window. Anything he could do to try and stop that car, unfortunately, it just didn't work out. And then you see just, man, it really, uh, that's a bad incident there at the back of the field. And the single file, unfortunately, just doesn't seem to have, made much of a difference at this point i nah. i wonder if it's just uh, maybe the nature of the beach well it, maybe so uh the track's not terribly hot it's only 84 degrees and yeah it's a clear day 80 80 uh, 82 degrees outside so i don't think we're fighting the track conditions maybe we're just uh well you know soup one thing we haven't talked about of course this weekend has been the uh, the i racing 500 going on I know several of these drivers, for fact, have already run their splits. That's a long day, no matter how you slice it, uh, when, no matter when you drive it. Even if you drive it at 1 in the morning and don't get done until 4.30 in the morning, it's a very long day. But uh, um, a couple drivers could be fighting some fatigue this evening. And, and uh, that's a big deal, man. I, it, it, it translates to iRacing, to, to racing in this sim just like it does in the real world. The driver's got to be fresh when they're running to win. And uh, if you're not fresh, you're not on your toes, incidents are going to happen, unfortunately. And they're going to stay with the single file. Yep. Don't worry, i got a new fake book here, little known. I, I'm a, I am a musician. i got a new fake book of Disney, uh, Disney cartoon songs. So if things really go south, we can get into a little Lion King, perhaps, or maybe a... Okay. Bells can of Notre make, Dame, that's a favorite. Yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay, can we do them all on drop D, please, for me? <laughs> okay, I think that's doable. <laughs> My musician friends get that. All right, the lights are still on the pace car. That gives us an opportunity to do what we've done every time we've gone to caution, and that is check in on Joshua Banks. Where does he sit now? How about six? Although he blinks a little bit for me. Yeah, but he's not the bigger, biggest mover anymore. Chris oh, no. Wolfson... After getting into trouble, I think it was on the first or second caution. I think it was the second caution. Wolfson had somehow managed to get himself up to eighth. He started 22nd tonight. We are working lap number 46, soon to be halfway. The pace car pulls in. J.R. Shepard in control. And there goes JR. Field seemed a little timid on that restart there, if I'm being honest. They were spread out, and a few guys were real slow to get going, just not wanting to make any contact with anybody. 
Butler back there. He's the next one to fight with Tico, though. This is right in front of Kenny Kibbe. You think oh, I got maybe, a cup? Go ahead, Kibbe. You think maybe Kibbe's shaking his head right about now. <laughs> Behind that, Tico gets out of the way. Well, on my screen, I got a couple blinkers right there. Moore and Banks, both racing fifth and sixth, are blinking pretty heavily for me. Joshua really blinking a lot now. Yeah, you know, again, I'm not used to seeing that problem with Donnie Moore. I'm beginning to wonder if it's more a service-based yeah. issue or, or, or if it's maybe an us issue. Okay. Uh, you know, like the old girlfriend, it's it, like the old girlfriend, it's not you, it's me. I, That's I don't right. know. Maybe. So <laughs> I've had that line before more than once, actually. So. Single file racing. Let's check in on the car in seventh. This is Jeffrey Harden. He's got that hard charger, Chris Wolfson behind him, Bruce Pearson. They race in line. Shepard beginning to pull away a bit from Pusini, but you can see the interval up on the top of your screen. We have made it to the halfway mark and change. Well, we've knocked the door down. We we are now uh, That's it. heading towards victory lane, Soup, any time now. <laughs> let's go. Let's look at more. More making a move here for inside of Altice. Ruben's going to fall another spot back. I'm almost wondering if Donnie even knows he has the issue, Soup. Well, he doesn't have to worry now. He's got about seven or eight car lengths before True. he gets up to the back True. of James Lowe. And honestly, I don't know if he's going to get to Lowe. Well, if they keep it green like this, uh, Lowe right now working really hard to overtake uh, Chris Pacini. Pacini, obviously, trying to keep pace with J.R. Shepard. In fact, almost trying to mirror his line just a bit as I follow both of them around. Pacini uh, trying to be the good student back here. Thinking big picture, even though Shepard leads these guys by a two and three points respectively, if they can stay close, it keeps the pressure on Shepard that if something goes south, there are no drop races in this series. One one mistake from Shepard or, or one one back marker that, that forgets he's a back marker and, you know, these guys can steal a championship here. Don't let me forget, I have a good story at the next caution flag, and if I have to yes. package that for next week, I will package it for next week. But I, I just remembered something. Oh, I, I, I hope, have to bring I up. Hope, I hope we do, as we're going to stay green from here on out. Shepard beginning to open it up now. He's got to be feeling pretty good. He's probably had a plan to how much rubber he wanted to use up at, at uh, lap 57 with probably 30 of these laps being under yellow. He's probably got more rubber than he's had in a long time at the halfway mark. Kibby back here. Kibby and Butler going at it. Kibby tried to make a move on Butler. It didn't work out for him. Butler got him back down the front straight. Now they're back to battle and out of turn two. Here comes Kenny Kibby on the inside. He's going to slot back in for now. And the Butler will close the door on him. There's quite a train back here. It really starts, I believe, probably with, with uh, maybe Hine. No, maybe the car, maybe Adam Shane. That's well, hard to say. I think it starts Kurt with Meeks. Meeks. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe it is with Meeks. That being said, Spiller's got good pace after finding trouble earlier herself, having to take a, a, the backup car out. Yeah. Hon honestly, I, I fear almost talking much more about Sarah. This is about as good as we've seen her run since she's entered the uh, the bootleg racing league sk modified division i mean there's a great side-by-side -side paddle right behind her and that's uh hein who we were just talking about a moment ago hein stuck on the top side adam shane trying to get the spot down below and he does hein looking to do a little dipsy do a little hucklebuck a little up and under that's not going to work more banging we still race sarah spiller in 11th spot way to go sarah one of the commentators talked about seeing her up front. Maybe getting into 12, seeing her on the pole. Go ahead. Oh, Butler uh, but, gets into yeah. an issue. Butler and Kibby get together. Replay. I... 
Maybe we'll get a shot from above here from our director, and it looks like maybe Kibby drifted a little bit up the track. See, I'm looking at it. I see he's out to the I'm outside. Sorry, I but, see Butler, Butler rolling into him. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. All I, right. That's, that's what I meant was but, yeah, 22. Butler. Yeah, Butler drifted just a little bit, catches that left front of Kenny Kibby that you did catch from up top there, and uh, that sends Butler spinning on down in the grass. A couple cars behind them. I think Tico got involved in it, too. On board with Liston here. Remember, folks, get in touch with the crew shop right there on the hood. The crew shop, FW.com, and Liston. He squeezes through there. Hey, and if you don't like to cruise, they have other options. They're called the cruise shop, but they have other stuff you can do. They'll they'll book you for a weekend package somewhere inland. I think some Call of these them up drivers, and I think some of these drivers might be interested in a vacation when this is all done with tonight. So I'm not taking credit for that one, by the way. <laughs> Another great on port shot. Uh, the one we had with Liston was pretty good. That one car got up on its lid, and that usually results in having to replace the car. Unfortunately, that was, uh, I think that was TJ McGuire, and I think he has parked it for the night soon. Kurt Meeks sits in the transfer spot. Sarah Spiller, one spot ahead of that one. Who's in the Baker's Dozen spot? Well, it's Adam Shane. 36 to go. It's modified racing suit, but gets rough every now and yeah, then. It just happens. Right, baby. Doesn't bother J.R. Shepard. The only car in front of him is the pace car. J.R. cares very, very little about that caution flag at this point because everyone he gets just guarantees, uh, at least him in his own mind, that he's got victory uh, down the road here in just a few laps. And, of course, JR stands for Junk Rubber, and he is always faster <laughs> when the rubber is old. Oh, he seems to be good when it's time to go racing near the end of the race. Pacini and Lowe chase him. Let's go ahead and t give one more tip of the hat to Chris Wolfson. We talked about it before, 22nd to 7th. Well done. Racing in the number 7. All right, so the lights... Are, are still on. So I'm going to tell my story real quick. All right. Okay. We got a moment here. Let me tell this story. So uh, a few weeks ago, we had a guest driver, and that happened to be my, my younger brother, John Ambrose the third. Uh, my father, apparently, John Ambrose Jr., known as Junior Ambrose to many of his friends and fans from his racing days, uh, was not very happy about that. And uh, uh, he wants to race. So he keeps telling me, I want to race. I want to race. In fact, he's been on several of our broadcasts recently just putting in the chat, I want to race. Well, he got in his truck and he drove to North Carolina where my brother John's at. And uh, tomorrow sometime he'll be in my brother's sim rig taking some laps. So we'll see how that okay. all works out. The pace car is off and we're ready to go back to racing, buddy. Well, I'll tell you the days of just calling up Lowell Jewel and saying, hey, can I race? Those are long gone as it's a deep waiting list here. We're going green again. Shepard out in front. Bassini had nothing for him. Low in his usual position down on the bottom side. Uh-oh, stuck on the top side now is Donnie Moore. Altis in the 11th. Moore oh, bumping and banging. No. We got another big nonsense. Oh. John Hine gets together. Huge, huge. And it was with Sarah, Sarah Speller, actually, yes, as uh, how it started. Well, you know what? Sarah actually gets no. through that pretty unscathed, but it started with them starting. Fault. It's, yeah, it's, not. Yeah, she, she got really squeezed. got. She did. She got squeezed in there, and and uh, a Kibby just gets munched, just squeezed up into the wall. That car is probably half its width it was when they started. The boss was behind that. So was Josh Buckley on board here with Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was Adam Shane who got to the inside of her. It didn't leave her yeah. much room. And with Mother's Day still being so recent in my memory, I, I tend to be a little more sympathetic to drivers of the female persuasion. Boy, howdy, aren't you? Yeah. I do not want to give away any spoilers, but <laughs> it's hard not to. But 
good day for women at Indy at the Indy 500 today. Okay, well, see, you and way. I have a fundamental disagree- disagreement uh, about yeah. one particular driver. We're not going there. I'm just gonna I'm gonna defer to your booth mate on Wednesday nights, the Lionheart yeah. IndyCar series, and I'll 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 let you talk with him about it because uh, uh, I think he has the best opinion. Talking about I think he has the yes, former IndyCar Richie great Hearn. Richie Hearn. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, and he has an opinion. <laughs> Get the pleasure to work with Richie. It's so cool. It's still so cool. I still smile every time I hear you two guys on the air. We got to get Richie to bring some yeah. of his buddies from that era. I mean, I do indeed. I, I mean, really, yeah, he's told some of the stories of the guys he hung out with. I can't imagine it would be that hard for him to recruit one of them. They just have to be involved with eye racing somehow. So we've got to we got to try and make that happen. If you have, in fact. If, if you had a pick, which one of his old buddies would you would you like to have at the booth, Sue? Ooh. That's tough, isn't that it? Two thousands. <laughs> I wouldn't mind I think he's in Paul Tracy's era. I wouldn't mind yeah, talking to Paul. Yeah. They're buddies, yeah. <laughs> you know, interesting story about Richie Hearn, since we're filling for time here, was as when May rolls around, I always go and, you know, get on YouTube and watch the past Indy five hundreds, because that's just kind of my thing. I think 2001, Richie's uh, claim to fame. He was waiting for Tony Stewart to have to leave uh, early. He was uh, Tony Stewart's relief driver in case Tony had to do the double. And we hear from our director that that Richie Hearn had done one lap of practice. (laughs) Does not surprise me that uh, Tony Stewart was not happy to, (laughs) not eager to give up his car. All right, well, the lights are off the pace car right now, so Medina Mendez is going to bring that car around. She's going to bring it in for the final time this time. Sean, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to let you call this one. There's 27 to go. This is going to do it. We're going green from here. Drop it down. Let's get ready to boogie, everybody. Let's get this party started. J.R. Shepard's got the field out of four. Here we go on the throttle across the finish line. We are back underway, mean green, and heading to the checkers, baby. They're already battling for P3. Donnie Moore, James Lowe, trying to get sorted out. Lowe backs out of it. Altice has to check up soon. Moore sneaks that position in, so he moves up to third. Lowe back to fourth now. Altice has started on the pole, hanging in there in fifth. But here comes pardon and thanks. Joshua Banks takes it in deeper than beat Nick Poetry. My goodness, he's going to make it stick, and he gives a little bit of an elbow. That's why we call him Pardon, and then he says thanks as he takes the position. Banks up into fifth. That's also going to let Wolfson pick up another spot as Altis continues to struggle back there, dropping through the field now, back to seventh. My goodness, on the charge, Chris Hungley right to the Wolfson, up into seventh, sixth position now. That is 16 spots he's picked up. This is a short track racing. That's almost near impossible. 24 to go. We've got ourselves a race now and the excitement, you can feel it. Shepard, Rossini, Lowe. I left off Donnie Moore. Sorry, Donnie Moore in in third now. But the guy to watch is back in fifth. Does he have anything left? He's had to work his way. I'm talking about Joshua Banks. He's had to work his way through 12 cars. More bumping and banging, but the iRacing stewards let him race. Play on. Shepard up in front, hitting his marks. 20 to go. Smooth as blended whiskey is J.R. Shepard. I think for the first time tonight, Soup, the field is really spread out. Still plenty of cars here. With 20 laps to go, there is a possibility they could get around to some lap traffic. Checking that now, actually. JR is, uh, boy, I don't know, Soup. I think it'll be a while. Right now, Dan Butler is the guy at the end of the field. I don't think he's going to catch him. Dan's already, what, Dan's out of four already heading down the front straight. Yeah, it's half track. Who's we'll in the see. transfer spot, you might ask? How about Sarah Marie Spiller? Don't count that girl out. She's trying to hold on to 12th. We'll see her on the pole next round. So many stories to tell. So few laps to go. 18. Shepard, Pacini, Moore again. 
starting to slow down James Lowe now. Any chances of Lowe winning this thing is going to have to rest on him getting around more than maybe a yellow flag to get him up there so he can take another shot at it. Joshua Banks back in fifth, probably out of gas. And I don't mean gas, I mean out of rubber. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you on that. You know, you mentioned Sarah Spiller Soup. We would love to get her in for an interview oh, yeah. at some point. Uh, uh, you can talk basketball with her. I know that's near and dear to your heart. And uh, pick her brain a little bit. Uh, find a little bit out about her career as a basketball player. Cannot wait. Come on in. Hey, there's a good battle going on for eighth. This is Smith who just got around yep. Harden. And now Harden tries to go underneath him again. These guys are having fun. Let's keep it clean, guys. But this is good racing going on. Nothing going on up front, so we continue to look at this one. Yeah, Jeff Jeff fighting hard there in the 44, down on the bottom. Smith running it hard up top, right up against the wall. Man, it's been going on for at least four laps now. Now some momentum from the top side for Smith, and he's going to be able to get in front, shut the door on Harden if he wants to. Harden tries to poke his nose in there, does not. Watching everything happen there is Bruce bang the drum slowly, Pearson. Meeks, Sarah Spiller still hanging on to 12th. Jason Menda wants that spot. Soup. Chris Ficini is working on something here. I got a feeling my spidey senses are tingling just a bit. They're only separated by just, uh, what, five, a half, yeah. half a second. And, and it's it's closer than it was. <laughs> yeah. Another driver, let's look down at third position. He's starting to peak. James Lowe clearly holding everybody up is Donnie Moore. Lowe would like to get in there, and if he doesn't get in there soon, Joshua Banks is going to show you why he has that nickname, as he is hungry. The 36 is ready to go. And I was wrong, Soup. They're all passing Butler now. Down the front straight. He's off the throttle and out of the way. Let's everybody get by. Those three continue to battle hard. Well done from Butler. Longest green flag run of the night. Like fight Great club, battle for third position. It. We don't talk about it. It's like a no-hitter, right? <laughs> right, right. We're heading into the bottom of the seventh, and it's like, no, 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 no. You leave that guy alone. Don't say a word to him. Slowly but surely, Pasini starts to get up on the back of Shepard. But it might be a case of having to milk the rooster. The hard part starts after you catch it. Similar situation for Lowe as he continues to pressure more. I, I again, I think Bassini has been a good student tonight. He is. I'm watching the lines, and it's not that much different than what Jr. is running. I think he's realized if I got to catch him, that's the way I've got to do it. So he's had to adjust his driving style just a bit. He mixes it up from time to time, tries to get a better run, maybe from the top center of the turn. But uh, right now, it's it continues to close. So, while this is going on, Sarah Maria Spiller continues to hang on to that 12th position. That a girl. Menda now was taking a run at her. That's not going to work as he's challenged by Andy Tico. This is good news for Spiller, and Spiller's not done. Let's look at this right now as she goes yeah. underneath Kurt Meeks. Sarah, easy. Sarah getting greedy. I think Sarah's getting tired of being wrecked every week and not yeah. finishing races, Soup, to be to be perfectly honest. I mean, we know she's a, a basketball player, so obviously pr probably pretty darn competitive. She's certainly been hand-checked, that's for sure. As he's been... Yes. <laughs> More than once, yeah. yes. Hey, let's go to third. I think it's going to happen. Lowe has a chance. He's really working hard. Oh, no, and it happens from back behind. <laughs> it's Banks who does it. Oh, Banks out there with those those beautifully polished gold rims trying to get those car that tires underneath. Could not get it done. All right, and we do have something developing here. Kibby is right in front of J.R. Shepard. It's going to be three laps to go with the line. Ah, uh, what's Kibby going to do? Is he going to get right out of the way? Yes, he does. He goes Kibbe. right up the track. Hello. Puts it up top. And that, that all that momentum that... Cassini had seems to be fading here. Yep. I think on that last restart, he went, uh, well, he threw everything at it but the kitchen sink, and I think the kitchen sink is drained. 
Might be uh, getting a little empty there, Soup. Here he goes. J.R. Shepard working his way around. Two to go. Yogi Berra said it ain't over till the fat lady sings while the big girl's putting on her horn helmet right now. She's about to regale us in song, getting the white flag as J.R. Shepard. Four more corners as he comes out of two. He's got himself an eight car, car length lead on Chris Bassini. There is no lap traffic between him and the checkered flag. He's gonna get the win here from Stafford Motor Speedway. Bassini gets second. Donnie Moore will get third, low oh. and banks for the Okay, following Spiller, following Spiller. She's still trying to hang on to that 12 spot. Soup coming out of four. Tico was it. trying to get a run on her and she got it. Oh my goodness. Ooh, we got Sarah Spiller on the pole next week. That's gonna be exciting. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you right now, if she's the bride maid in your wedding next week, she ain't gonna be there because she's coming back to start on the pole. All this going on behind J.R. Shepard, who picks up another win, but he doesn't pick up that many points on his competition. The racing is over here at Stafford, but stick around. Our broadcast is far from done. We will be back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock in the gate. Back in a few. Lots of great sponsors on GSRC that makes these broadcasts possible. None better than the Cruise Shop. We thank them for letting us bring this broadcast to you. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's Round 8 coverage of the Bootleg Racing League's Outlaw Modified Series, the 2009 Spring Season Championship here at Stafford Motor Speedway. Once they started racing, my gosh, it was exciting. Let's give you the finishing order right now. He's been there many times before. J.R. Shepard wins, but the big news is he doesn't score that many points as Chris Bassini is right behind him, as is James Lowe in fourth. 
The final podium spot goes to Donnie Moore, who picked up three spots to get there. Joshua Banks, we watched him the whole way. He gets the bottom part of your top five, 19th to 5th. Now, the back half of your top 10, Ruben Ortiz, Kurt Smith, Jeffrey Harden, Chris Wolfson. My goodness, 22 to 9th. Nice job from him. And Bruce banged the drum slowly in 10th, Pearson. All right, let's go to after that. Sean, who you got? All right, Soup, let's get the rest of the field out of the way here. Kurt Meeks will finish 11th. Sarah Speller is going to finish 12th and be our pole sitter next week. And I think we're going to get to talk to her, actually. Uh, we've got Andy Tico finishing P13. Jason Menda, the Floridian, will finish 14th this evening. John Hine, 15th for him. The 87 to Todd Liston. Well, it's a tough night for Todd, but he does finish 16th. 17th to Kenny Kibbe, who seemed like a pinball tonight. Dan Butler, he'll finish 18th. We noted his trouble. Adam Shane will finish 19th. 20th, going to go to Josh Buckley. And then we'll get the last three here real quick. The boss is going to finish 21st. Not happy with that. TJ McGuire is out. Uh, he finishes 22nd. And Scotty Zerk, well, he uh, he missed a lot of this race. Soup 71 laps down. An early retirement, and that is 23rd for him. And I believe you have caught up with our winner, the champ, uh, the reigning champ, and the reigning champ for quite some time now, Mr. J.R. Shepard. J.R., congratulations on another win. You pick up a little bit of distance in the points on Pacini and Lowe, but they finished second and fourth behind you, so you're still going to have to work to get that championship. Tell us about tonight. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good night, Soup. Um, I was I was a little worried once I got in the second place and had to restart on the outside a few times because uh, this, this track's pretty line sensitive. Uh, if you go in just a little bit too high or a little bit too hard into the corner, uh, yeah, the car just loses grip. But, uh, yeah, thankfully, I was able to hold on to it there. With so many laps under yellow, you had to, the car had to be pretty happy at the end of the race where at least you had some decent rubber to run on, right? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, I was probably probably about two to three tenths of a second slower than when we started. Uh, the track had rubbered up a little bit, so that uh, that made a little bit of a difference. But uh, it was still handling. Okay, I'm going to get you out on this with some i racing news. Now, I must my understanding that uh, i racing is coming out with a new edition of a of a of a modified car. Are you interested in maybe switching over to that one? Do you like this SK modified? I do not like this current SK modified. Um, it's uh, it just because of the setups that they've uh, been using. It's gotten uh, the cars way too tight. So I'm very interested to see what they come out with and uh, maybe something that's a little bit more racier setup. -wise. I think it'd be fun. Maybe shake things up a little bit here in this really good series. All right. Congratulations on another win. You're not home free yet on the championship. couple more to go. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Hey, let me give a shout out to Chris Pacini. He ran a great race, and uh, to Donnie Moore for coming home third tonight. Thanks, guys. Absolutely, J.R. Shepard, always the gentleman. Crackers, who you got? I get to talk to, uh, well, Chris Pacini, driver of the uh, number fifteen Eastport feeds SK modified. <laughs> Chris, congratulations on a P two run tonight, uh, buddy. It looked like you were maybe uh, the class was in session. It looked like you were maybe uh, the following Jr. around a little bit, looking for that fast line. Yeah, it was. It wasn't until that last run I was able to find my rhythm because one and two and three and four are completely different how you got to drive them. And uh, just watching Jr. and you have the advantage of when the track starts to rubber in and you build up heat in the the racing line, you can you can try something different. And you could tell right away if you're you're gaining or losing. So you probably saw me swinging high a little bit, swinging in yeah. the low on well, entry. Junior, and yeah, huh? like it, it's harder to do that if you're trying to pull away from the guy behind you. So it's, it's like harder to tell. But yeah, I'm I'm happy with second. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, and when it's second to Jr., not a bad deal. But uh, oh, you yeah. know, in the pre in the pre race, we were talking about you a little bit and. I, I really, I, I think you got a championship coming here somewhere down the line. At, maybe not this season, maybe next. I don't know, but. Um, oh, be, don't jinx it. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, man, I think it would be really, really cool to see that number 15 uh, tack on a championship. Uh, and that segues to my next question with you. D does, does Wayne have any idea what we're doing here? Does he have any clue? Is he I'm, aware? I'll, I'm I'm going to go with a hard no. A hard no. Okay, yeah. 
as much as I message him, I never get a reply. <laughs> when I do, when I do, it's always in all caps. That's kind of funny, but anyway, no. Uh, okay, well, I was curious if maybe you had some inside info. I didn't, but uh, no, that's okay. No. Still, still pretty cool seeing the car on the track every week. So, hey, congratulations, man. What's uh, what's the what's the plan going forward here these last three rounds? Um, really, just not trying to get too much out of it and ruin a race because now we're getting so close to the end that one one mistake can pretty much end the entire season. Especially when you're surrounded by guys like I had low behind me, Donnie Moore, JR in front of me. It's like one little slip up and that's all it would take. Yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, travel safely and proceed with caution. We will see you next <laughs> week for uh, for round nine and another exciting race, I'm sure. Congratulations again, Chris. All right. Thank you, Sean. All right, buddy. And that is New Yorker Chris Pacini. And uh, we're happy to see him finish P2 tonight. Soup, I'm going to let you talk to my old friend and New England native. That's We're going to forgive him for that, Donnie Moore. Very good. You know, during while you were talking, when you are talking to Vizzini, that my the emails were coming and tweets were coming in. My neighbor came over, pounded on the door, telling me that uh, iRacing apparently is not going to let you keep the old SK. They're going to replace that SK modified with the new one, so you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. Aha. Donnie Moore, congratulations uh -huh. on a third-place finish. Uh I thought you had a chance to win, and then I thought, uh-oh, he may have trouble holding back uh, low and banks there at the end. Yeah, I, I, I earlier in the race, I, I screwed up. Uh, I, I think there was a restart when I was in third, and I uh, kind of screwed up and lost a couple positions, went backwards, and, uh, yeah, that was just a, a messed up on my part. So I had to fight back. Uh, for the for the rest of the race, and I'm uh, lucky to get third. Hats off to James Lowe, man. He was right on my right on my back uh, in in racing me clean. So I uh, appreciate that. And uh, I also have to apologize for blinking. I, apparently, I didn't have a very good connection there, and it's it's really hard to race someone who's blinking like that. So I apologize for that. Well, we got through it. You come home in third. You made yourself onto the top five overlay. A long way off the championship, though. Um, are you happy with the way your season's gone so far? Oh, no. No. Okay. No, 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 not really. No, uh, compared to seasons past, uh, no, I, it hasn't been a very good season. So. Well, then I, I want to drill down on that. We'll get you out on this question. Is it because you are off your game, or is the competition around you really been a little tougher than it has been before? Uh, probably a little both. A little yeah, both. Probably, probably a little both. Well. The season's almost over. We'll be back for uh, what would be next. What comes after spring? Winter, spring, summer, I guess. is No, that's well. I don't know what happens next, but whatever the next season <laughs> is on the calendar, Lord help me, uh, you'll be in contention. Good luck the rest of the way. Hey, hats off to uh, Stone River Outfitters, a sponsor. Uh, give them a shout if you have anything to do with fly fishing. These are the guys to uh, to, to go to. Out, uh, StoneRiverOutfitters.com. Give them, give them a uh, good And that's a, that's a good sponsor to have because summer is coming up. And if you're going to go fly fishing, you want to do it in summer. See, I know my seasons. All right, Sean, who you got? <laughs> Soup. I get an opportunity to talk to Sarah Maria Spiller. And uh, Sarah, now if I'm correct, this is the first time we've got to do an interview with you, isn't it? And we'll give her a second to get the mic working there. Sarah, really can you cold. hear us? We believe she is of german descent and racing out of chile we're gonna kind of pro probably get both of those wrong let's see if she can figure out how her mic works <laughs> boy if not we're certainly going to get to talk to her next race because she's going to be starting on the pole she's going to hold that down look to go wire to wire sarah one more time you got a shot oh that's too bad well all right well tune in next maybe. week because she's yeah. wire to wire baby yeah, we'll we'll tease that we'll tease that for next week. But listen, Sarah, I, I know you're watching the broadcast. Please come back and talk with us uh, next week. We're we're fascinated uh, uh, by your history. We 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 want to we want to ask some questions and uh, uh, and and find out how long you're going to be around with us here uh, in the bootleg racing league because uh, we enjoy seeing you on track and it looks like the pace is picking up every week. She's going to get a chance to flex the muscle from the front row next week on the pole so congratulations to her on that p12 run and soup another great bootleg race in the books and all looking forward to round nine next week
Yeah, my disappointment not being able to talk to Sarah is only only surpassed by my anticipation to get to talk to her next week as she picks up the win. Thanks to everybody in the Bootleg Racing League for organizing the Outlaw Modified Series and contracting with GSRC to broadcast. For more information about the Bootleg Racing League, try, and here you go, facebook.com slash bootleg racing league or bootlegracingleague.com. Here's the most important part. It's our sponsors, the Cruise Shop. You can call them, 260-755-6125, or visit them on the web, thecruiseshopfw.com. If you forget about the FW, it's Fort Wayne. So they're uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, but they'll book you forever you want to go. On screen now are just some of the equipment and software used to stream cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Lalonde. What does June Lalonde do? Well, she provides our wonderful music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. Uh Uh-oh, the Bootleg Racing League returns for round number nine. And it's going to be from, if I look up there, is that telling me? It looks like Oxford Plains. There you go, as I can read it on the graphic. GSRC will be there, and that we hope you join us. Sliding across your screen right now are some of the upcoming broadcasts, so check those down and mark them down on your calendar. If you'd like more information about GSRC, here's what you do. GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. If you're one of those guys like Donald Trump on social media, try Twitter, GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Also, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by hitting that big red button on our YouTube page. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, and that would be Crackers, Joe, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If I've said this once, I've said it a million times. J.R. Shepard wins here tonight at Stafford. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.